Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and what you're looking at is a Windows 8 computer running a number of different applications here. We've got Earfan View, which is an image editing slash viewing application. I use it a lot for uh, cropping, resizing, doing basic image edits before uploading to my website, lilliputing.com. Uh, we've got Microsoft Excel, we've got the Google Chrome web browser here with a number of browser tabs, and uh, everything's pretty responsive, and uh, you can see that it also is running sort of the full uh, Windows 8 experience in terms of desktop applications and uh, touch-friendly applications such as uh, Kindle, TuneIn Radio, and so forth. So uh, it looks like a, a desktop or a laptop, but it's not. It's actually an 8-inch tablet, which is running Windows 8.1. It's not much larger than a Google Nexus 7 or an iPad Mini but it's got an Intel Atom Bay Trail processor and it's capable of full desktop style apps. It doesn't really have the physical size or the ports or other things to do this very well, but it can do it, which is kind of what I wanted to show in this video, the fact that you can use this as a full desktop style application. Now the screen resolution is 1280 by 800 pixels, which on a small 8 inch screen means that you'd spend a lot of time squinting unless this is right in front of your face. Uh, so I've actually adjusted the DPI settings to 125%. The default zoom level for Google, Google Chrome is also at 125%. Um, but it works pretty well in terms of things like playing video. Uh, YouTube works just fine. Netflix works fine. We're wrapping gifts over here. Hi, how are you? Wrapping gift wrapping. Yeah, that's right. I'm just trying to do a little bit more. Hi, this is Brad Linder with Little Cuting, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Tab 37 inch. So you can see the video is not a problem, uh, web surfing, no problem. Um, in terms of hardware, what we're looking at here is an 8-inch 1280 by 100 pixel multi-touch display, an Intel Atom Z3740D Bay Trail processor, 2 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, Intel HD graphics, 802.11n uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, micro SD card slot, uh, micro USB port, Front and rear cameras, 18 watt hour battery, whole thing uh, weighs about 14 ounces, and it's uh, easy to hold in one hand. It's not quite as easy, as I mentioned, to sort of use as a desktop, and that's because of the relatively limited uh, ports and buttons and other things here. We've got uh, external speakers plugged in. We've got a OTG, a micro USB OTG adapter here, which I'm using to plug in external keyboard and wireless mouse. And uh, that's about it. Uh, that's the same port that you would actually use to charge the device, which means that you can't use a keyboard and mouse and charge it at the same time. If you wanted to hook up an external display, there's no VGA, there's no HDMI, uh, there's not even full-size USB ports. So what you would wind up doing instead is uh, you can use a Miracast-capable device to stream content to an external display. Or if you had a uh, display port adapter, you could use the micro USB port uh, in order to hook up a monitor. Um, but it's not really what this device is meant for. Uh, in terms of buttons, we've got this here, which is a Windows button, power button, volume buttons, and that's largely it. So again, this device is really meant for use in uh, sort of the touchscreen paradigm, but it's capable of doing anything that you would do with a full-fledged Windows device in terms of running full-fledged Windows applications, which is kind of what makes it special. It's just that doing that in this desktop mode is a little bit tricky unless you plugged in, say, a mouse and keyboard. So let's take a quick look at sort of what it's more designed to do, um, and I'll have more details on the tablet functionality in a future video and in a full review at littlelooking.com, but I just wanted to sort of point out the fact that you could use this as a desktop were you so inclined. So uh, Dell sent me this uh, device for review purposes. They included this folio case, which we were using to prop it up, and a stylus, which is an uh, active pen for use with the tablet as well. So you can see, um, let's go ahead and minimize you. So there's an active pen here, which allows you to sort of wave the cursor over the screen. And uh, you can see that without even touching it, we've got a cursor moving here. But then you can also use it for handwriting recognition, or you could go into um, applications for drawing and whatnot and use it for that. Now, I'm not much of an artist, so a stylus isn't the most useful thing, and my handwriting's pretty bad, too, so uh, I find myself not actually using it 
as much as some people might, but I'll go ahead and test it a little bit more before sending this device back. Uh, again, in terms of applications, it's really sort of designed for these um, full screen uh, windows, RT, Metro style applications, and it handles them pretty well. Uh, some of them, like TuneIn Radio, really want to run in landscape mode. Um, let's go ahead and go back to the start screen here. We've got Skype comes preloaded, uh, the Internet Explorer, which you can run in sort of a full screen mode, uh, Netflix I've had no problems with, and it's got Windows 8, which makes it a little bit easier to navigate in terms of going from your start screen to all your, uh, your full screen applications, and the Windows Store and so forth. Now this particular device is relatively inexpensive, it sells for really just a couple hundred dollars, and includes Microsoft Office, but if you're not going to use Office with a keyboard and math, um, and mouse, I find it a little bit awkward to use in terms of text input um, using the on-screen keyboard and uh, uh, stylus, just because typing on this sort of device is not the easiest thing for long form uh, text entry. I also find that I'm not a huge fan of the way that switching to numbers and symbols here works on the Windows 8 keyboard, and that's partly just because entering, uh, say, a, a relatively secure password that uses numbers and other symbols might require going back and forth a lot between this sort of thing, instead of just um, using what's on here and sort of long pressing. Now you can long press some items, so let's do two, three, but it's a relatively slow way to enter text. So I'm not a huge fan of this uh, Windows 8 keyboard. And in terms of applications, there's a growing number of Windows 8 applications available from the Windows Store, which is not really quite up to the number that you're gonna find from uh, the Apple iTunes Store or from or uh, App Store or from uh, the Google Play Store. So if you're looking for third-party applications, you'll find many of the ones you're looking for. You know, the Kindle, as I mentioned, is here. TuneIn Radio is here. Netflix is here. Facebook is here. Um, Barnes and Noble Nook is here. But what there are many other things that are not here. So, um, for example, there's no YouTube app. Um, so if you wanted YouTube, you're going to have to switch to the web browser and use the web view instead. So it's, um, the tablet experience is very similar to what you would get with something like a Nexus 7 or an iPad mini in terms of size, in terms of sort of uh, how you hold it, how you use it, the touchscreen gestures, but the uh, fact that it can run full desktop style applications is what helps set it apart, and the fact that there aren't as many of the full screen tablet style applications as you might want also sort of sets it apart. And also this weird tune-in app, which doesn't seem to realize that it's running in portrait mode. Anyways, that is a quick overview of the Dell Venue 8 Pro tablet. Uh, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing. And again, while I'm holding it as a tablet here, I wanted to take a look at the desktop style performance uh, in this video. And in the future, we'll take a closer look at how it works and how it functions in terms of tablet performance. In terms of hardware, it's very similar uh, under the hood to what you would get with, say, an Asus Transformer T100. But because it doesn't come with a keyboard dock, uh, its performance is... Uh, uh, very different. So it's got the same sort of oomph, the same sort of capabilities in terms of processing power. It's got different performance in terms of how you hold it, how you use it based on the design. 